think we get it going tonight, Daddy? We better. Jesus, will you come by here? Oh, Jesus, will you come by here? Jesus, will you come by here?
It's all right, son. Old Sounder did his job. It's just when I realized there wasn't gonna be no meat on the table, I just acted foolish for a minute. Anybody's to blame is me, because I ought to nail him on that first shot. It's too dark, Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well. Well, I guess we better get on back to the cabin. Sounder. <laughs> Son, there ain't no dog as good as Sounder. In all the years we've been tracking coos and possums in these woods, he ain't never towed one of them up yet. <laughs> he always brought them back whole and healthy. Now, you see, now that's the difference between a pound dog that's uh, mean and dirty to one that's great, like old Sounder here. I bet you tired, little boy, ain't you, David Lee? Yes, sir. <laughs> you ought to be tired, too, Sonny, because that coon sure whipped the hell out of you tonight. He beat you, too, Daddy. And you had a big shooting rifle. You don't make funny with your daddy like that, boy. David Lee? Yes, sir. You had a rough time out there tonight, so uh, you stay home from that school tomorrow. But I want to go. You learning anything at that school? Yes, sir. Well, when the night comes in these parts, that old moon runs like a scared rabbit. You stay out here all night just looking. I see a thing out yonder. We gonna hunt again tomorrow, Daddy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I guess you wonder why, though, huh? Well, with the luck we've been having. But, like I always say... You lose some of the time what you always go after, but you lose all the time what you don't go after. Now, who says I didn't put my mark on you, boy? <laughs> David Lee? Time to get to bed, son. Night, Daddy. Good night, son. Don't wake Joe's man early now. Your bedtime, too, hound dog. Now go on, get up there. Go on. I bet you can use a hot cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I sure could, Miss Rebecca. Mm. <laughs> oh, Nathan Lee. <laughs> Damn it. That boy done been in my walnuts. I skinned my fingers to the bone to pick two pounds that's worth almost nothing at the commissary, and he done took by half of it. The boy is hungry, Rebecca. through these hard times before, Nathan Lee. And we made it. And what did we make it to, Rebecca? Another season sharecropping for old man Perkins? Working ourselves to death so he can get richer and we can't even eat when cropping time is done?
Nathan. Nathan? 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 to the children. Rebecca. Yes. What's the weather like out there? It's hot. Don't be good baseball weather for our game today, then, huh? Mm -hmm. Morning, Daddy. Well, morning back at you. Hey, now, you save some of that for me, huh? Sounder? Hey, Sounder. Come on. There you go, boy. And that ought to put you in good shape for the night, huh? <laughs> now, now, don't take all morning at that table, David Lee. Mama, you can take me and I'll go to school with David Lee. Maybe soon. thing we got plenty of is wood.
Ready to go, Mama. Well, tuck that shirt in, David Lee. And when you get out of that school, you come straight on home, yeah? You're gonna have to take this laundry work I done for Miss Broke, right? Today? Bye, Daddy. Bye, sir. Where was it you went last night, Mason? I did what I had to do, Rebecca. before we were interrupted. Oh, yeah. Huckleberry Finn, chapter 34. This chapter is called We Cheer Up Jim. Here we go. Tom says, what's the vittles for? Going to feed the dogs? The colored boy kind of smiled around gradually over his face and says, yes, Mars, sit a dog. <coughs> Chinaman in all this world to beat her iron. Well, now, um, here's for your mama's work. And, uh, here's something for the three Thank of you. Thank you, Sportbrite. Thanks, Miss Sportbrite. Oh, by the way, David, I got that book I promised you. Uh, it's all about the three musketeers. Thanks, Miss Sportbrite. And when you've read it, we're going to talk about it. Yes, ma'am. We got to hurry. Oh, tell Rebecca hide for me here. Miss Bowdry. What's the time? Come on, Josie May. We got to hurry. <laughs> Look 
mistake I went into this white church down there in Rye Parish you know and to this very day I don't know how I ever got out of there alive <laughs> well they probably thought you was crazy oh man I guess so I guess so but I went home you know me I did me some grand to the good Lord yeah, you know you. Uh, and I asked the good Lord about this white church that I went down into in Rye Parish and I said, all I want to know is how the devil I ever got out of there alive. And what did the good Lord say to you, Ike? Well, the good Lord say, Ike, you know, you're doing better than me. Because I've been trying to get in there for 200 years, and I ain't make it yet. Ike, if ever there was a devil in this past, you did. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a song out of that, can you, Ike? I believe I'll just do that, speed Raw. Bye, is where I'm going to have to say goodbye to y'all. It's been fun, Miss Rebecca. Yes, too, Ike. Oh, yes. Yeah. Looks like mm -hmm. it's going to be a nice warm night coming up, Nathan. You going in the woods? Oh, yeah. And coons and possums better hide deep from us tonight. Mm -hmm. Reddits in the woods better hide tonight. <laughs> oh, Lord, hide tonight. Hide tonight. Oh, Lord, hide tonight. Hide tonight. Oh, Lord, hide tonight. Hide tonight. Critters in the woods better hide tonight. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Hide hide tonight. Nathan, he bent up to get the ball to all the drink with his <laughs>
You've been in your house, Nathan. Hold that dog. Found what we was looking for, too. Now, you took some food and stuff from Jamie's smokehouse last night. My deputies mean we got to take you down to the county house. What they doing, Mom? Don't go ahead. Get him in the truck. Jeff Young. We've been knowing Nathan for a long time. You know the kind of man he is. And you know the troubles we've been having in these hard times? All right, let's go. Josie May, I'm fixing to go in town to see about your daddy. David Lee is in charge now. And you and Earl do just like they tell you, here. Yes, yes Mom. Mom. David Lee, watch the fire. And fix some of that coal mush for y'all Lee. Don't go too far now looking for Sounder. Anybody comes that's a stranger asking you questions, don't say nothing, here. I will. Right, son? Bye, Mom. I won't be gone too long.
Rebecca. I was sort of expecting you this morning. I'll come see Nathan. Well, I wish I could, but I can't let you. I don't understand that, Sheffield. Well, it's simple. That's the rule. I follow. Ain't no visiting except Sunday and holidays. No women folk, no time. You mean tell me I can't see my own husband? Well, that's the way they do things here in Lansdowne. I just follow orders. But I gotta see him, Mr. Sheriff. Young, I gotta see Nathan. Well, I'd like to help you. But that wouldn't do anything but get us both in trouble. You gonna give him a try? Probably sometime next week. I tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, as soon as I find out what day, I'll just drive on out to your place and let you know. Rebecca. You got you a low-life job, Mr. Sheriff. That's one dollar and twenty cents. I want to get me some thanks. I hope it ain't a lot, because I can't give you no more credit until cropping season gets back. That is, if Nathan makes it. I didn't say nothing about no credit, Mr. Perkins. What you want to order? I need me some flour. Nutmeg. Chocolate. Extract. Oh, some sugar. And give me two eggs. Now, what I want to talk to you about is Nathan. He oughtn't have done what he did. Sneaking in James' place and taking their goods. That looks bad on me. I've been good to y'all. Didn't I go to all that trouble to get the people of Lambs down and let your David Lee go to their school? Didn't I? And another thing, with Nathan in jail and all, how you gonna crop for me when the spring season comes? Huh? Damn it, I'm talking to you, woman. I got a phone to worry about and I need some answers. Cropping season is a long way off, Mr. Perkin. By that time, Nathan ought to be home. If he ain't, believe me, the children and me will do the cropping. We have to, because we owe you all that money. Mr. Perkin? You think Sonny dead, David Lee? Will he stay dead? He ain't dead. Now stop asking crazy questions. You don't have to get mad because you didn't find that other dog. He's not dead. Evenly? Mama! 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 Lord, it's hot. Anything for me? How y'all been? Anybody been here? No, ma'am. You see Daddy? No, son. Have to wait till the holiday come. Anyway, won't let women folks see them in no time. Can I see him when the holiday comes? You sure can, son. Any sign of sounder? No, ma'am. I looked all over these parts. Well, I think maybe he was scraped on the head by that shot. I don't think he's dead. Just gone off to heal himself somewhere. Nothing here. No? I'm fixing to bake a cake for David Lee to take to your daddy this time. Make a chocolate cake, Mom. Daddy likes things this chocolate. Defendant will rise and come before the bench.
Nathan Lee Morgan, you have been found guilty of unlawful trespass and robbery. Is there anything you wish to say to the court prior to the court pronouncing sentence upon you? No, sir. The sentence of the court is that you be immediately remanded to the custody of the sheriff of this parish and that you be transferred forthwith to serve a term of one year at hard labor at a parish prison camp to be hereafter designated. Clerk will call the next case. Thank you, Mr. David Lee, be sure to ask your daddy to tell you what camp they're going to send him to. Look perkish now, so you don't grieve him now. Okay, that's all, son. Don't forget what I told you now. What you got there, boy? Cake for my daddy. Well, put it on this table and wait till I check it. Can't be too careful, boy. Just might be a steel file, a hacksaw in it. What's your daddy's name? Nathan Lee Morgan. Okay, boy. Third cell down there on your right. Well, looky here. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> Hi, back at you. Mom's outside with Josie, me, and Earl. It sure is good to see you, son. 
This was a real cake before the man outside put all these holes in it. <laughs> oh, now that don't make no difference. I know your mama. A few old knife holes ain't gonna destroy the soul that she doesn't put in this cake. Yeah, now have a piece of your daddy. Daddy, we didn't find sound of him. Well, he showed up one day. Think he's dead, Daddy? No, sorry. He'll come back to you just as soon as his wounds heal. Now, you see. Oh. <laughs> this cake sure is tasty. Shame they won't let them come in here. Well, if I had the strength, I'd knock down these damn walls just so I could get my arms around your mama. Just they on this side of us, do you think? I think so. I'm gonna see them up there. Break both my arms. Son, don't ever let yourself get caught in a place like this. Daddy, can you say what camp they're going to send you to? No, they don't tell us things like that. But I don't want y'all to come here no more. Why, Daddy? You won't be here? You do like I tell you. Time's up. Come on, boy. Son. I rather be fishing for Brimmy and the creek than working in the sun out here all week. My specs to get ahead, Lord. My specs to get ahead. I got to keep on working, keep on pulling, keep on hard in the hot sun. Long, long trip. Long, long time. Yeah, for specs to get out the way I live. Got to push and pull and give and give. For specs to change my way sometimes. I got to do what I'm doing now. I got to do what I'm doing now. I got to do what I'm doing. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Someday it'll be a change, Lord. Someday it'll be a change. Yes, said D'Artagnan, but we shall inevitably be shot. Yes, rejoined Athos, but you know very well that the bullets most to be feared are not those of the enemy. Yet it seems to me, said Porthos, that for such an expedition, we should have at least brought our muskets. You are a simpleton, friend Porthos. Why should we?
woman, but I ain't no fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't blame a girl for trying. No, I haven't got anything, Rebecca. I went down to the courthouse yesterday to see about it. They wouldn't tell me nothing as to what labor camp Nathan was sent to. And I'm sorry. It's a damn shame, Reverend. It's a damn shame. Let us not think to bitterness, Sister Morgan. When this same church, we have women with the same trouble you will have. But I tell them, whatever misery, I try us, take it to God. Take it to God. Not that simple, Rebecca. God works in a mysterious way. We brought nothing into this life. We carry nothing out. Is that a blessing, Reverend? It's a blessing. Thank you. Easy boy, easy girl, it's okay, it's okay. He eats all right. His throat ain't scarred. Do you want to bark like he used to? Oh, he will. Get down and act like a possum. I don't look like no possum. Act like one. <gasps> get him, boy. Get him. Don't tell that dog to get me. Oh, shut up. Why don't you get yourself a new dog? Want me to. Vote right! 
I'll go away from Simpsonville with you. All whenever right. you want me to. Half an hour ago, Evan and Anthony Loring and his vindictive wife, Millicent, who hates Evan and has sworn to destroy both Evan and Anthony. All right. Faced the young playboy, Bruce Caulfield, in his hospital room and heard Bruce reveal that Millicent, one secretly married to him, is still... David! Would you like a cool drink? No, thank you. I have some work to do in the field today. Is boat right? Yes, David. Would you help me find out what camp they sent my father to? Well, the courthouse has rules about things like that, David, but, but I'll ask around town about it. See you tomorrow, Miss Fulton. David. I'll find out where your daddy is for you. Thanks, Miss Fulton. You don't mention this to anybody, David. You hear me? can't do that, Rita. Now, we have a policy here on colored prisoners. And I ain't about to change that, even though we're in the trenches. Charlie, just because a man and his family are colored... Look, I don't make the rules, Rita. And you're putting yourself out on a limb asking me to do such a thing. And I'll be damned if I'm going to jeopardize my job just because you're in love with a little colored boy. Excuse me. Here. Sheriff Young here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You bet your life, sir. I'll be right over. That was Judge Elliott. When Judge Elliott calls me, I jump. Goodbye, Rita. But Charlie. No! And oh no! find what you were looking for? Well, I... I did look, Charlie, but... No buts about it, Rita. Charlie, you have no legal right not to tell that boy where his father is. Do you hear that? You and this whole damn courthouse, what you're doing is wrong. You tell me about wrong. Now, you come in here as a friend, and I find you going through the files? You know I could have you arrested for that? And if you give that information out, that's exactly what I'm going to do to you. And I'll tell this whole town how you got that information and who you're giving it to. And you won't have a friend left in this parish to, to bring you a piece of candy. You would do that, wouldn't you? Now you're getting the point, Mrs. Boatwright. David Lee. Mm -hmm. 
Fulbright? You know where my father is, don't you? No. He was wrong, David. I didn't find out. Miss Fulbright, I saw you. You looked in there and you found out where my father is. If I say I didn't, David, that's what I mean. I don't know a damn thing. Now stop bothering me about it. Come. I'll take you home. I'll walk. Now, don't pout now, David. It's a long trip. I'm used to it. Well, you can't say I didn't try. David? I'm Miss Boatwright. I'm sorry about the way I acted the other day. Well, there's no need to be sorry, David. Where's your mama? Yeah, I have Miss The camp where Nathan is at is called Wishbone Labor Camp. And, um, it's in Nolan Town. Oh, he's a crazy acting woman sometimes, Miss Bobra. Now, um, we go from A2 to, uh... Now, let me see where we go from here. You're having trouble, Miss Bobra. Oh, no, no, no. These maps are easy to read, but, um... There it is, right there. How do you get there, Miss Boatwright? Well, um, there are numbers and letters on here to show you where to look on the map. But, um, well, Nolan Town isn't under a number. But we know that it's in Northern Lansdowne, and the number for Northern Lansdowne is H7. But, um, since Lansdowne is the largest parish, it actually stretches across into A2, and uh, A2 is... Um... Am I making myself clear? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, it's clear, Miss Boatwright. I'm sure we'll find it. I mean, when the time comes for us to find that place, we'll find it, won't we, Charlie? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, we'll find it. Do you believe it? By knowing the first road you're gonna come to is that Jordan Road, and uh, you go all the way down the end of the Jordan Road to the labor camp, that's where it is. But at the end of the road, now look, it's gonna be a long trip, you know. Good luck to you. Thanks, Mr. Dad. I do, really. 
Here's your food and thanks. If you get tired, you go into a railroad station or a church to rest. Don't you go to nobody's house, you hear? Yes, ma'am. And you tell your daddy to send some word about what time you're going to be home. And tell him I love him, yeah? Tell him I said hi, too. All right, now get a move on. You're losing daylight. Come on, Sounder. Come on. You have to come back on visiting days. When's that? Sunday. You know my father, Nathan Lee Morgan? Never heard of him, boy. We got lots of men in that prison.
come from? I want to see about my dad, Nathan Lee Morgan. Is he here? Yeah. What are you doing there, boy? Move. Mr. Nathan Lee Morgan here? There's nobody here named Morgan. Now get away from here before you get us in trouble. Yes? Well, can I please just wash my hand where it's got blood all over? Let me see that. Sit down over there. You don't live around here, do you? No, ma'am. I come a long way. Me and my dog were just trying to find my father, and we got lost. Is he here in Borderdale? I don't know. He's in a prison camp. My name is Camille. Camille Johnson. I'm the supervisor of this school. What's your name? David Lee Morgan. My dog's name is Sounder. That feels better. You keep looking around, David. Don't you go to school? Sometimes. But not like this. Well, it's a good thing that this hand did not become infected. How did you hurt it like this? Well, me and Sounder went to this prison camp looking for my daddy, and the guard hit me on my hand. Did your mother know you were going to see your father? Yes, ma'am. That does it. Thanks, Miss Johnson. David? Why don't you stay, stay until school is over? I don't live far from here. You and your dog can come home with me and have yourselves a hot meal. Then we can talk about how to get you back home. Yes, ma'am. Take a seat back there. Yeah. 
pretty house, Miss Johnson. I try. Got a lot of books, too. Here, let me tell you something about the books on these shelves. This book is about a woman who helped to free slaves. Her name was Harriet Tubman. She died in 1915. Thanks, Miss Jansen. And this one is about a man called Crispus Attucks. He was the first black man to die in the American Revolution, the war that was fought to help this country become the United States. Miss Jansen, don't you teach in your school about folk who ain't dead? Sure. Here's one about a man who's very much alive. Dr. William E. B. Du Bois. What'd he talk about? Here, I'll read something. He said... The longing of black men must have respect. Which means that a man and a woman are human and must be treated that way. The rich and bitter depth of their experience. The unknown treasures of their inner life. The strange rendings of nature they have seen may give the world new points of view and make their loving, living, and doing precious to all human hearts. And to themselves, in these days that try their souls, the chance to soar in the dim blue air above smoke is to their finer spirits boon and guerdon for what they lose on earth by being black. You're a nice lady, Miss Johnson. Stop the laughing. Who else has a story to tell us? I got a story, Miss Johnson, a true story that happened to me. You know the class is going to challenge your story, don't you, Clarence? Yes, Miss Johnson. All right, go on. Me and my little sister went down to the water hole last Saturday. You are doing something wrong. You ain't just name your sister. Me and my sister Laura went down to the water hole last Saturday. We was playing along the edge of the water. Laura slipped and fell into the water. I started to run back home, but I turned around, ran back, dove into the water, and got out before she could drown. How was your sister after you pulled her out of the water? She was dirty and wet. What made you run? I was going home to get my daddy. What made you stop and go back? Because if I had ran home, by the time I should have got back, my sister would have drowned. How come you didn't know that at first? I was scared. Hold it. Clown's theory ain't true. Me and Clown went to the river a lot of times, and I know he can't swim. <laughs> Clarence, would you tell us a story that was not true after telling us it was? No, Miss Johnson. Can you swim? Yes, ma'am. Clowns. You know you can't swim. Every time I try to show you, you fell down. And I had to always pull you out. Is that true? Yes, ma'am. When I saw my sister about to drown in the water, I tried because I wasn't scared in the mold. I was just swimming and kicking. I don't know how I was doing it, but I was because my sister was drowning. She was drowning. I believe Clarence's story. Do you want to stand up and tell us why, David? Well, some people came and took my father away. And other people said we couldn't work the farm. But we had to, else we would have lost the farm. So we planted the crops and they grew. I believe Clarence's story because of what he did. He couldn't swim, but he had to. Else his sister would have drowned. And that's how he did it. You know, that was a good thing you did for Clarence in class today. I believed his story. But I was afraid the other children wouldn't. 
I knew he was scared nobody would believe him as soon as he stood up. You did? How? I've been like that sometime myself, thinking nobody would believe me. You want to hear another story? Not now, David. It's getting late, and you have a long trip ahead of you in the morning. What are you looking at out there? There's nothing to see. Daddy always looks out into the dark. Even when there's nothing to see. He says it's what you hear. You think about your father a lot, don't you? Yes, ma'am. You shouldn't worry about him too much, David. But what am I going to tell Mama when I get home? Tell her that I didn't see Daddy? And that's what I wanted to do. But you did all you could. Not many little boys could have gone on such a journey as you did. But where's Daddy? I can't answer that for you. But it's no fault of your own that you don't know where your father is. Tell me what you did that kept you from finding your father. Hmm? Come on, tell me. Nothing. And so you did your job, right? Yes, ma'am. Boy, you sure keep my mind jumping. What does that mean? That means you keep me using my head, and that's good. Miss Johnson, you think I can come back here and study school with the other children? Miss Johnson here. Who's Miss Johnson? Oh, she's a teacher. I stayed over at her house some of the time. So when I left, she gave me these books. Well, <laughs> Miss Johnson must be a right nice lady. Well, she is one. Mama, when the fall comes, Miss Johnson wants me to go to her school. She says I can live with her while school's going on. And when school's not going on, I could come back home. Who's going to help me here in the house? And in the field? Well, maybe by that time your dad'll be back. It's all right with him, it's all right with me.
Samuel. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. This finishes your share. Did a good job cropping, Rebecca. Dear Miss Jansen, how are you? I am doing okay. I told my mama, my brother, and my sister about you, and they like you too. I can't make this letter too long because I have work to do. Bless you, David Lee Morgan. You sure write a good fine letter, son. A good fine letter. Look at you. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh. What's the matter with your leg, Danny? Oh, I got it hurt in a dynamite blast. <laughs> when I wasn't no more used to them, they took some time off my sense and let me come home. <laughs> that was some meal you fixed for us, Miss Rebecca. And I sure won't thank you. I'm glad you like it, Nathan Lee. You know, I miss them dumplings almost as I missed you, you know. <laughs> All right, children, it's two hours past your bedtime. Get a room on. Come on. You too, huh? Good night, Dad. Mm -hmm. Good night, you pretty little thing, you. <laughs> Good night, Dad. Good night back at you. That was some journey you went on, boy. Daddy, I'm so glad you're home. Well, 
Me too, son. We going hunting again? Well, sure we going hunting again. I cleaned the oils and stuff while you was gone. Your turn now, David Lee. Good night, Daddy. Good night, son. Daddy, you home now. That's all I want. I don't want nothing else, just you to be home. Hi, Rebecca. Hi. Somebody told me Nathan's back. How is he? Why don't you pay him a visit, Mr. Perkin? He'll tell you how he is. I'll do that, Rebecca. I'll do just that. Where's that old peck of wood won't now? <laughs> well, he wants you to pay him a visit. Two of you could sit under a shady tree, drink ice cold whiskey, and shoot the breeze. Well, I hope you told him I was too busy for that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, now y'all done did a good job with this crop. Well, come on, let's get to work. Well, you sure you feel up to it, Nate? Yeah, I feel up to it. Why not? All right. Come on, you. Hey, come on. Come on, you. Let's go. I sure am proud of the way you helped your mama keep this place going. Thanks, Daddy. You know, some people, some people may think this is hard work, but it's sure in the hell he's going to jail. You won't be going to jail, will you, Daddy? They'd have to kill me if I go back to that place. Nobody going to jail, and ain't nobody getting hurt. Hey, go on, get me some more of that thing. just won't act like it used to. You sure you're all right, Nathan? Yeah, I'll be all right. I just have to... I just have to rest for a minute or two. Well, here, let me help you. No, you, no, you just stay where he is. Feel great. <laughs> Just great. That double scene. 
No, you let it go, just zip off that finger there. You got it? Yeah. Let's see. Closer. Yeah, that's it. All right. Zip it right in here, right over home plate. Hey! Oh, come on, Josie. Hey, I. How you doing? Anytime it's Saturday and I ain't got no work to do, I'm doing fine. <laughs> hey, I. Hi. Hey, what you got there? Mm. Seen this piece of mail come this morning over to Mr. Perkins' place, and he said for me to bring it over here. I'll give it here. Mm -mm. It ain't for you. It's for a little important man over here. Me? Well, son, ain't you gonna open up and read it to us? Okay, I got to go. I'll see y'all in church on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thank you for the trouble. Mm, have a good day now. Bye. Who's it from, David Lee? It's from Miss Johnson, David. Well, read it to us. If you are coming to school here, be sure to bring some warm clothes. The school term will begin September 8th, but it would be good for you to be here by the 4th of, or 5th of the month. I do hope everything is fine and you will be here. Give my hello to your family. Yours truly, Miss Camille Johnson. September 4th. How far away is that? About a week. Yeah, come on, Jerry, let's go. Where are you going? To the commissary to get this boy some clothes. In fact, I'm gonna get something for everybody. Nathan, you can't do that. We owe oh, Mr. Perkins now, too much. Don't a... tell me what we owe old man Perkins. I do know it. Let him worry about the collecting. Come on, David Lee. Come on, didn't you hear me? But, Daddy, you just got home. I want to stay home and be with you. Well, I won't be with you, too, but... Well, this school is something you need. Something that's good for you, like, uh... Like good air to breathe. I want you to have it. And that's where it's gonna be. But, Daddy, who's gonna help you in the field? Your leg is hurt. You can't work like you used to. Who's gonna help you around the house? Let me tell you something. If I had both my legs cut off, I could do more work in that field than you could in a hundred years. I won't go, Daddy. I just won't go. Wait just a minute. You don't tell me what you ain't gonna do. I tell you. And if I say you're going to that school, you're going. Now, come on. I won't hear nothing more out of it. David Lee! David Lee, come back here! David! Please. Leave him be. You missed your great bit while she was gone. Sweated and worried to find out just where you were and made that long journey. You're home, and it's only a natural thing for him to want to be with you now.
Can I talk to you for a minute, son? You know, when I got this leg hurt, I was down in this rock quarry. And all of a sudden, there was this dynamite blast coming at me with the kind of force to kill ten men. Well, sir, I got out of the way of most of them rocks faster than the lightning in God's mind, because I made it up in my head just that quick that I was going to beat the death that was coming at me. And that's what I'm going to do with this trouble in my leg. I'm going to beat it. Ain't nothing left for me to do but to beat it. But that's what I want you to do. I want you to beat the life they got all laid out for you in this place. Because there ain't nothing, there ain't nobody here but them bastards that sent me... Son, don't get too used to this place. Because wherever he is, I'm going to love you. I mean, me, your mama, Joe's and me and Earl, we're going to love you even more. We're going to come and see you at that school every chance we get. I love you, son. Don't ever think that I don't love you. You think we're going to get to be friends? Get a move on, bag boy. You carry on, bag. I'll carry it. No, I will. Thanks, Josie. Man. Okay. And I'll be back tomorrow evening. Careful now.